been a light winter, so I'm getting ready for fishing season a little early. And today I'm gonna to talk about five things every fly fisherman should carry outside of the obvious. Let's freaking do it. Hello, I'm Jeff and I do knife and outdoor gear review as well as outdoor activity videos and vlogs. So please subscribe before you take off. Today I'm gonna to talk about five things that every fly fisherman should carry at all times and outside of the obvious. So I'm gonna put a, a list up here of, of what I figure is obvious, a fly rod, a reel, line, uh, tip it, those sort of things. Those are the obvious, but what is not as obvious? And if you do know these things, which these are a lot of people would say obvious as well, but some wouldn't. But if you do carry these things, what should you carry? So let's start where everybody starts. Number one. <laughs> First thing that you should carry and have it in your kit with you when you're out fly fishing is a good pair of nippers. I'm currently carrying these uh, Orvis nippers. I really, really like these. They are a little spendy. They're not the cheapest nippers in the world. And a lot of people out there are screaming at the, the screen and saying, Jeff, just get a pair of fingernail clippers and call it good. They're $2. And you're probably right on some instances. However, with when you have a good pair of nippers, they're gonna have a, a good clean break on your tippet or on your fly line in general. Um, they're gonna have a few usually other little things that this has the the hole cleaner for your flies, uh, just some little stuff like that. But I like these, they have good leverage and instead of clamping down weird when you're out there, these are built to have a little bit of an angle and really nip well for you. So I like these Arvis ones. There's a lot of expensive ones out there, but there a lot of guys use just normal nippers and it's just fine. But one thing that you should make sure when you have good nippers is that they make a clean cut on your tippet because when you're dealing with small flies, getting that line through the hole and tied, you want it to make a good clean cut and make it easy because you're fishing, you don't want to worry about nipping. So, pair of nippers. <laughs> Number two is a good net. Now I fish out of a boat 80% of the time, so I have a boat, a big boat net by Fish Pond, and I'll uh, put a photo of that here. And by the way, I'll mention all of this stuff. I'll have links to down below if there's something that you don't have and you want. Uh, just click on the link below. But I use a Fish Pond boat net. It's a bigger net. I wasn't going to bring it in the studio here today. That is a good net. They're, they also have a a carry one that's a little bit smaller, but benefit of a really good net and don't go get a cheap net especially if you're fly fishing catch and release the good nets have a material that one take care of the fish they aren't going to damage the fish when you get that cotton sort of material for your your uh, nets they can hurt the fish and in there's there's studies out there that show that getting a good net will save the fish and it's going to save you a ton of flies what happens inevitably you hook a, a fish, you net it, and the fly pops off and it gets hooked in a, a cheap nets webbing and you're done. That fly is gonna get broke or bent or something trying to get it out of there, plus you're gonna ruin your net. Get a good net, not something that you wanna skimp on. I suggest the fish pond, but there's a lot of good brands out there, so get a net. <laughs> Number three, these are critical. In fact, a lot of fly fishermen will tell you that this is as important as a life preserver in your boat. And that is a good pair of sunglasses. I have these, the Smith Guides, they call them. Guides Choice, I guess they call them. They have a, a brown tint to them. You can find online the different tints are supposed to help in different lighting. So wherever you're located, you can get different tints for that. If you have a lot of direct sun, if you have uh, some overcast, uh, it helps you. One, with seeing fish, polarized sunglasses, incredibly important for that. But number two, this protects your eyeballs. You have little tiny sharp flying objects flinging around your head all day long. Protect your eyeballs, you only get one pair and get yourself a good pair of sunglasses. Don't go cheap here again. Get you one pair, they'll last forever. If you want, just use them for fishing if that's if you don't wanna break them. Uh, I've had these pair for three years and they're still in great shape. The great part about Smith's and Oakley's and a lot of the different brands is if you scratch up the lens, you replace the lens as long as you keep the frames good. So get a good pair of sunglasses, critical. <laughs> 
The fourth thing is a lanyard. So some people will use a lanyard like this, to put it around their neck, have all your stuff on here. And you can see I have a thing to clean my sunglasses and I got my nippers on here. And sometimes I'll put some other stuff on here, but it's always accessible if you keep it around your neck and stuff that you can grab, do easy and drop. Some people put it on their bags. Some people just have their stuff laying around. Um, sometimes you have a pocket in your waders. I like having a lanyard. You'll see a lot of folks use a lanyard just because the most critical things to you are right around your neck and these things are priceless in that category. Uh, this one's a Sims one. You can get, uh, there's some really neat ones here in uh, Missoula that uh, they make these fly lines. They make them out of old fly lines and they make these. Those are really cool. Whatever is best for you, but get yourself a lanyard, put your most critical stuff on that and keep it close to you. <laughs> Last but definitely not least, in fact, this might be the most critical, are pliers. I actually carry three set of, sets of pliers with me. I have these little tiny ones that I stick on my boat. Pliers to help with so many things, especially if you have a boat, fixing your boat, getting a fly out of a fish's mouth, unhooking a fly that's been hooked on something else, tons of uses. So I have this little pair like this, just a little tiny pair. I also last year carried these Gerber fishing pliers. They made these specifically for fishing. You know, they, they do have these nippers here so you can um, cut stuff if you would like. I'll show you that real quick. And you can see where it would, you can nip off some line or whatever else you need to. I'm actually this year gonna spring and try out the Sims guide pliers. They're super expensive, oh man. And if Sims, if you see this and you wanna donate, please do so. so but I'm gonna try those out I think this year. Orvis has a good pair, but get a good pair of fishing pliers. I also carry a regular Gerber, just fold out knife. So yeah, just a normal pair of Gerber flip out pliers. Those are more for working sort of stuff. I have a barbecue and do some different stuff like that. So it gives me an opportunity to be a little bit flexible there. But these two are kind of for my fishing and doing everything fishing wise. And those are more for work stuff. Three pair of pliers, I'm probably excessive. One or maybe two pair is probably plenty in a boat. One pair is fine if you're wade fishing. Probably something like this that has a, a sheath to it that you can put on your belt and uh, um, fish away. But a pair of good pliers, definitely important and something that you will be glad that you, you have on your side. If I missed anything that you feel is critical to a fly fisher, men and woman, that they just can't live without, please comment below with that. Otherwise, thanks for watching. Subscribe before you leave. And until next time.